Bob Shrupp, physical therapist, and I'm Brad Hayek, physical therapist. And together we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion. In our course. opinion. Today we're going to talk about something that many of you suffer from, and they call it tension headaches. Mm. And uh, a lot of times, I don't think it's so much tension as the fact that it's uh, more postural, that you're in the wrong position. Sure. When you're, and I think a lot of us get these when we're at the computer, and you think, I'm all tense, I'm trying to get work done, and the fact is that you just put yourself in a bad position, and you don't move, and that brings on the headaches. What are you talking about, Bob? How, how, can, can you explain why posture makes a headache? Yeah. Um, actually, well, we could demonstrate with the, the bowling ball also, but sure. a lot of headaches do, a lot of headaches, especially if you feel them in the back of the head, yeah. they come from what we call the suboccipital area. Mm -hmm. And Brad, maybe if you turn around, oh, I'll sure. on you. You're going to okay. touch my suboccipital area. That's right. I'm really thrilled to death. Um, here's his neck. Here's the occiput, and this would be called sub underneath the occiput. It's really where the neck meets the, the head. And this area right in here, this is where a lot of people, a lot of headaches emanate from. They start here, and they bring it, and they'll kind of go up into the head. Sometimes, yep, sometimes they'll go up and around, uh, even go into the eye. Uh, sometimes they're one-sided. You just feel them kind of going around this way. But generally, you can see they're kind of not somewhat related to your neck. When you move your neck, you feel it, or, um, yeah. And that's usually the worst position. If you're in a good upright posture, there's really not that much stress on this area. But as soon as you start working at a computer and bring your head forward, now you're putting a lot of stress on this suboccipital area, and um, you start starting to put pressure on it. There's actually a, a greater occipital nerve there that can cause that pain that goes around the area here. And also C1 and C2, there's a lot of pressure on that. Uh, you really don't need to know all that. All you need to know is that this position causes the pain. And Brad, do you want to explain to you one of the reasons why that position causes pain using our friend? Sure. Here? You bet. You have to remember when you're in this position, your head, which weighs about the same as a bowling ball, is hanging there. Gravity's working and pulling it down. And as you're in that position, there's muscles back here preventing your head from flopping down like this. Otherwise, you have to go like this all the time. Okay? So you're like this. Muscles are working overtime. If you've been on that computer for more than 20 minutes, they're already fatiguing to the point where they're starting to get lactic acid. There might be some impingement on the occipital nerve. And uh, a number of sources of pain. And we need to eliminate that. But a good way to demonstrate that is if you take, like we have here, the bowling ball represents the head. You okay. Want to yeah, you want to hold it up. You now. Um, I should have been the other way though, since you were facing this way. Well, right? yeah, yeah. We're just gonna switch, switch right, right around. Mm -hmm. We want to stay. Because Brad technically was, correct. Brad was like this. Yep. So the, here I am. I'm the muscles. My hands are representing the muscles of the neck. Right. So as these muscles are working to hold my head from falling down. The, they are represented by these muscles. So right now, first off, with my head straight up, good posture. Good posture I don't have to work that hard. Right. You could probably hold that with one yeah, hand. Yeah, I can. Hard. I can hold this with one hand. Well, not a problem. Okay. okay. Now, wow. as you go forward and the head starts to lean forward, gravity's pulling there. You notice the difference in the effort. Right. Okay. Now I have to. My my hands have to work hard. And I've only been doing this for 10 seconds and my hands are really working right. hard already. Now, if we wanted to stay here for another five minutes, I have a feeling your hands and wrists would become painful. Yeah, they're getting fatigued now already. Right. It's, so. it's amazing the, the leverage that the weight of your head puts on your neck. Okay? So that's the whole idea. Think about your head as a bowling ball when you're at the computer workstation. As a matter of fact, if you work in an office with other people, I guarantee you, if you look around and see other, po other people's posture, their head's going to be too forward like that. Yeah. Very, very common. Yep, yeah, very much. Driving a car, very typical. Watching yeah. TV, happens all over all the place. Way through, all the way through the Absolutely. day. Absolutely. Matter of fact, um, why don't you grab that spine once again? And yeah, just give it a toss over here. You're getting good at that. Nancy has a spinal fear. Ooh, there we go. So if you just look at that, not only the muscles are being strained and the, the soft tissues and the connective tissue, but we're looking at the, the spine itself. When it goes forward, things are getting stressed in a way that is not pleasant for the spine. Right. If you're going to hold it there for a long period of time, it's normal range, but 
to hold it there in a long period of time. It's like taking your finger, bending it back like this and holding it for five minutes. It becomes very uncomfortable. Same thing's going on in the spine itself. And of course in the spine, you have the spinal cord and spinal nerves coming out and they're all prone for yeah. irritation or pain. And pressure on. And you bet. So what are the common problems that oh, most people have? Nice idea, Bob. Is, Let's, uh, and one that's very simple to, uh, to fix, is most people, in my experience, I've found they have their screen too low, right. their computer screen. I'm going to pretend I'm the automatic screen elevation. Yeah. So I'm working on my screen here and it's down here. What am I going to do? I'm going to go head forward. I'm going to get myself in the position. Now this is an extreme. This is typical for laptops though. Yeah, this is, this is perfect for a laptop, yeah, isn't it? it? And that's why we're seeing a lot of people with that problem that are using laptops yeah. or even their phones sure. going down like yeah. this. So let's say, you know, maybe yours isn't that bad. Maybe it's at this level here. I'm still, especially yeah. someone of my height, I'm still going like this. Right. Problem is too if you have bifocals. That's yeah, how I want to get around. Tip your head up. So for me, where I want it, where I do have mine at home, it's about like this, believe it or not. Almost level with the top of my hand. Brad's gonna stand up. So do you have your wife hold it for you? Yeah, but that's a <laughs> she it's a full-time job. So now I can go like this and I can keep good posture and I and actually I can probably stay this far away and still see the screen sure. without problems. So what's the rule of thumb? If you're sitting in a good posture, generally it, it, it almost you know your eyes are supposed to hit the middle of the screen. Mm -hmm. um, I always say you know it's going to be pretty close to the top of your head to the top of the screen. And what you can do very simply, you know, especially if you have a desktop computer and screen, is just take some books and put it underneath yeah, yeah. or a box. Or right. they have obviously things you can buy to help. You know, yeah, plastic arms, stackers. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. um, Linda just bought one of the arms that, that works really cool. You can swing it swing around. It, right. yeah. What I did with our laptop at home, I built a wooden uh, platform that's eight inches high. I put the laptop on there and we put a separate keyboard. That's what I and tell everybody. Well, and then we have a cordless mouse yeah. so that the laptop is where it should be and you don't have to reach up there and get yourself so, you know, cranked out of shape that you're... I get these young cool. college kids that are up, they lay on their, or sit on their bed yeah. like this and they're like this. Yeah, they oh cross their legs with a blanket and then a laptop overheats too. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Now, what you don't know on a laptop, you are not supposed to put it on a, a soft surface. Right. There, there has to be some venting underneath. You bet. See, so we're getting double ball. here. Some yeah. physical therapy notes plus some computer. That's right. right. We, we add it all here. So. All right, well, anything else you want to add about attention, headaches? Oh, the exercise. exercise. Yeah, what can you do if you find yourself? All right, well, you're like this, and, and let's say, you know, even if you're not like this, you're still getting some of that stress in there. And this is sometimes people get in their car, too. Yeah. So what we have to do is called chin tucks. So this is the bad position. So the good position is actually taking your chin and chucking it, tuck it in there. like this. Now, you're not going down like this, and you're not going like this. You're just backing it up. Right. So like if I was going to throw a pie in Bob's face, he's just going to back up right into yep. the Or if someone's going to kiss you that you don't want them to kiss you, what do you do? You go back like yeah. this. So you're like backing a, a truck up, and you want to do, you, you know, keep good posture here. And you can do these repeated. How many times? I would say 10, wouldn't you? If it's working, if it's feeling good. Yeah, yeah. if it's feeling good, you want to feel like, oh, that, that's I don't really think you need bad. to do more than 10. It's certainly not 20 or 30, you know, don't get carried away. And then... Um, Actually, at some point, you can actually do a little overpressure. Do we sure. want to teach that or not? Well, let's, uh, let's hold on that for more the next video. So go back in that for head forward posture. No, the posture. Oh, there you go. So if things in here tighten up over time. So this stretch, watch my fingers. Go do the stretch. See how my fingers separate? Well, that's what happens. The muscles and tissues stretch out and are allowed to relax when you do this exercise. It's a great exercise. Um, it's, it's easy to do and uh, it can save you a trip to the doctor. I had one girl that she, she did this, she used to get headaches in her car all the time. She, she did this, th that this alone stopped her headaches in the car. Sure, yep, I've had patients so, with the same thing. And they stuff. think it's tension, it's not tension, it's posture. Sure. You know, so. People so, will be saying they have a posture headache. And that's right, you're accurate, accurate, correct. Right? So, final thing, if you're 40 or over and uh, you want to be up to date on your fitness and health needs, you're going to want to subscribe to us. There you go. Because uh, we're going to give you all the answers in yeah. our videos. We've got over 180 right now, and we're, we're going to keep going. We'll so. help you out. That, Bob, the movie's coming on you. Let's get ready to watch it. Yeah, Raiders of the Lost Art. <laughs>